I was asked to migrate our data warehouse into BigQuery in Google Cloud. Terabytes of data, years of queries and pipelines. I'm excited to use BigQuery, but I don't know where to start. Hey, I come from the future to tell you that there are a lot of services to help you with your migration. Let me show you. Your migration journey starts with a plan and the scope. The scope will depend on how big and complex your migration is. You could migrate all of the workloads at once, or you could iterate in increments going from your least critical workload to the most important one for the business. This will give you and your team time to gain confidence in the operations of your new data warehouse or data lake as you gradually incorporate and transform the different components of your current architecture into your target one. This approach will inform the plan, which will have four main phases. Assessment and planning, SQL and pipeline conversion, data transfer, and validation and optimization. The good news is that we have a collection of services to help you with this process for multiple sources, such as Snowflake, Teradata, Cloudera, and Databricks. We also have a team of knowledgeable experts to guide you through the details. A customer engineer from Google Cloud will help you get an initial assessment report. This initial looker report will give you a ballpark estimate of time and costs, considering the existing system and projected state in BigQuery, Dataproc, and Google Cloud Storage, or GCS. At this point, it's a good idea to begin to understand the different terminology, some details of BigQuery, and the different services in Google Cloud as you start your full assessment. The Google Cloud team will recommend online training in Cloud Skills Boost or in-person workshops for you and your team. After the initial assessment, you can run the full migration services to further understand how compatible the current environment is compared to the target environment. The goal is for you to have a clear idea of how complex your migration can be, starting with the current usage, volume, and compute requirements how cost is distributed, and most importantly, this will confirm if your current approach to migration is the right one or needs revising. Let's see how you can get started and take advantage of the migration services and tools. You will start with the dumper tool. Depending on the source data warehouse or lake, there will be different technical prerequisites like user or network access that you'll need to fulfill before executing the dumper tool. Check the link in the description of the video to get specific details for your source system. As a note, this is an open source tool that you can compile yourself if your policy requires it. Let's see what a sample execution for Teradata, Snowflake, Cloudera, and many others look like. This will be very easy. You just run the command in assessment mode, and it will generate two zip files, one with metadata and one with logs. For data breaks, you can execute the assessment notebook directly in your workspace. The results will be available in a storage bucket. The output from these tools will feed into the assessment services. The services will look into the current artifacts in the source, like tables and views, as well as the query logs to understand the current footprint in terms of infrastructure, data processing, volume, and frequency. The assessment service will go through the metadata and logs and give you an estimate of what your data warehouse or data lake would look like in BigQuery. You will get the results of the assessment in a storage bucket and a BigQuery dataset. The files in the GCS bucket will be very useful for the next stage when translating SQL. The BigQuery dataset will contain data for some very insightful Looker Studio reports. Let's take a look at some of these. For example, for Snowflake, you will get three reports, a summary, a detailed report, and the segmentation report. The segmentation report will help understand the complexity of the migration by grouping the artifacts, like tables and views, into segments that should be migrated all together. This report will also show unsegmented tables, which can be migrated independently based on the query logs. You will also get a comparison of pricing models to match credits to slots in different editions and estimates on different commitment models, and many more useful data points. As another example for Databricks, the assessment report will include statistics about jobs, together with query trends and their categorization based on the size of the SQL warehouse. In all cases, these reports give you very important data points. 
First, you'll get details about your source system to help you figure out the dependencies and how to plan for their move. Then a projection of a landed view of your workloads on BigQuery, Big Lake, or Dataproc, as well as how to get there. That is, how to plan the migration, including details on its expected complexity. With all this information, you can work with your Google Cloud customer engineering team to understand the report containing an estimate of platform cost and total cost of ownership. The utilization of the current data warehouse or data lake will also be an important factor. So the report will show the queries executed per day, the amount of data scanned by those queries, and the storage they use. You'll be able to check the volume and usage of each table and confirm the sample logs are representative. Depending on the workloads, you may need to take into account logs for peak dates like accounting, period closing in finance, or quarterly sales reporting. Migrations can also be a good opportunity to clean up or archive unused objects. The report will show a list of unused tables as well as those tables that have usage but have no rights. The assessment service will also produce a recommendation for a proof of concept based on the logs. At this point, it is a good idea to keep an inventory of all the data pipelines and integrations feeding data into your current warehouse, together with orchestration tools or business applications, and factor those into the migration timeline estimation. It may also be a good idea to allocate time to test this out or run a proof of concept. With the information you have about the time, effort, and input from the business, you can further refine your migration plan to include success criteria, understand the target environment better, and other important things such as rollback strategies and contingencies. We will talk about data migration and validation in the next video so you have a full view for your migration plan. As part of refining this plan, you will consider the complexity for your migration as described by the assessment report and factor in the different workloads and how critical they are to the business. This is how you decide whether you migrate everything at once or perform a staged migration. The latter is the most usual and recommended approach for more complex architectures, where you may have multiple source systems and teams onboarding iteratively. A staged migration will allow you to gradually mature the architecture as you ramp up in the new infrastructure and validate your results. Now that you have a plan, it's time to start executing. Coming up next, data transfer and SQL translation. <laughs>